how to customize your charts on Robinhood Legend. What's going on, guys? Welcome on into the video. So right now we have a layout that I have crafted here on Robinhood Legend, and I have some other videos going over the platform. If you're interested in checking out the Robinhood playlist, they'll be there. But what I want to do in this video is I want to dive into the chart and talk about what levels or what things you can do to customize your chart. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to make a new layout, and I'm going to start from scratch here because... What I want to do is just make this a full blown massive chart so that we can see everything and it's way easier. Okay. Obviously if you're using this trading platform, you're probably not going to have uh, a chart like this because you're going to have something that looks more like this, where you're going to have, you know, your account balance, you know, watch lists, recent orders, options or positions, something just, you know, to, to, to do, you don't have to, but so you can kind of visualize, you know, what you got going on, but you know, it's an option. So let's go untitled layout. I'm going to make this one. Uh, I'm going to double click up there and it's going to call it chart, double click on the layout and uh, click enter on your keyboard and you can rename a layout. So I got the chart layout right here. Okay. Let's just start with the basics. We already talked about how you can trade from the chart, but there is a trading option up in the top and that is on a separate video. If you want to check out all the ways you can trade on the Robinhood legend platform, but you have that up in the top left. You also have the ticker symbol. If you want to change that, click on it and then type in whatever ticker symbol you want like. Simple as that. So if I want to go to Tesla, boom. Tesla, click on it, we're good. Okay. At the top of our chart, we have the option to toggle between market hours and our portfolio performance. So they will change the colors by how your portfolio is doing on the day. Um, so in this case, we're kind of green. Cool. But it's now currently 1024 Eastern time. So we have the trading session and it kind of shows like a sun in the background, I think is some little brightness there and the bottom is darker. I don't know. Kind of cool uh, feature you have. So below that you have your different options in terms of tools you can use on your chart. We'll get to that in a second, but I first want to talk about the basics of a chart. So I have candlesticks here. You might be like, Whoa, you know, where'd this come from? Maybe it's showing up. Maybe it's not showing up for you, depending upon what you're used to. Uh, if you go to the top, right, all the way over here, you got this F which is indicators. You've got the chart types, and then you have the three dots, which is the settings. Okay. So let's start with the settings and we'll kind of work our way back to the left. You have extended hours on or off. So I have it on. And what this is showing you, it's not very clear based off just looking at the colors. Whereas if you were to use like a trading view, you might see that you, have, that you can make different shadings for extended hours versus not non extended hours, really just pre market and after hours. But if I'm looking at Tesla, what we have is like, see all this volume? See the volume starts to pick up? That's like the pre-market hours. Then the market hours open 9.30 Eastern. Boom, lots of volume all day until 4 p.m. Eastern. Then volume dies. That is essentially showing you like what's in between. This right in the middle is extended hours. So if I got that, if I turn that off, now all we see is gap ups, gap downs potentially. In this case, there's just gap ups or mostly gap ups. And then all it's going to show me is during normal trading hours, like from 9.30 AM Eastern to 10 or sorry, to 4 PM Eastern time. So you, you might like that. I, I honestly don't mind. I, I personally trade and I will like to look at the pre-market hours and after hours in case there's some crazy action. Uh, but usually I don't really use it that much. So this is fine, but it depends upon your style. Okay. We have the option to put on open orders, turn the on or off. If we have orders set, buy orders, sell orders, limit orders, all that stuff that could show up. I currently have none on Tesla, but I can toggle that on and off open positions. If I had an open position, it would show me. So for example, I actually do have one on UBT. Let's pull that up. Boom. You can see the UBT. I'm up $4 and 30 cents sick on 45 shares of my UBT. And that's again, open positions. I can turn that off and that goes away on. See, it comes back. Off it goes away. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave it open. Okay, cool. Great. So we got that taken care of. Let's go back to Tesla because we have more better volume on Tesla. UBT is like a leverage ETF off of TLT. Uh, so it's not going to be as clean in terms of volume, less volume there. So Tesla with the volume, with the chart, with the after hours, all that stuff. Now we move on to the candlesticks where it says chart types up in the top, right? Click on that. And now we have options to go off of popular and then the other. So here's all the chart types that Robinhood legend currently offers. They, I wouldn't be surprised if they expand this. I don't know if they're going to, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, because there are potentially other options out there, uh, but this is going to cover the main basics. I mean, this is like the main, main core. 
Uh, you can get really, really deep in the weeds if you go to like TradingView and stuff, but like this is pretty good. So you have candlesticks, you've got line charts, okay? Bar charts. Zoom in, you're like, oh, that looks like a candlestick. No, look at it, it's actually a little bit different. So you have on the bar charts, on the green or I guess the neon or the yellow bars, you have the open where this little notch is in the bottom. You've got the close, where, so we're okay, where this line comes in, the horizontal line comes in from the left into the vertical line, that's the open on the green or yellow bars. And then where it comes out of the hor or the vertical line to the right horizontally, that is the close. And then the range, the upper wick, the lower wick. And then it's the same thing on the red bars you have where it comes in and then where it goes out. So where it opens versus where it closes. So where it comes in, you have the horizontal line coming up from the left. And then where it goes out is where we close on that candlestick and it comes out off the vertical line to the right. That's bar charts. Uh, we have a video from a while ago explaining the different candlestick types. If you want to look that up on the channel, uh, you can go ahead and do so. But you have the option for bar charts uh, there. Going down, you have others. You have area charts. You have, which I, you know, cool. You might look at this and see this on like CNBC or something like that. Baseline charts. There are other ones. There are plenty more where that came from. Heiken Ashi is another one that I think is kind of cool. Um, if you like more trending action, then there's hollow candle charts, which I like. Honestly, I prefer these over basic candlesticks, uh, depending upon the style and strategy. Uh, sometimes it matters. This doesn't matter. It depends. Uh, I used to, you know, pretty much only look at these. Now I don't really, for my strategy, it doesn't really matter. So I don't look at these, but I, I, I like them because they kind of tell you a little bit more than your regular candlesticks. Trend charts, scatter charts, to see little dots. Cool. Okay. Back to candlesticks. That is now, that's what we have. So that's the, all different chart types up in the top right. Now, F, indicators. Here is where we have not, I have nothing in here right now as I speak, okay? I can save templates. So if I want to look at a couple of indicators together, so for example, if I were to look at like the most popular, they have you a most popular list. I might want the VWAP, I'll click on the plus, and I might want the RSI. Let's pull up the relative strength index, boom. So now I have these two things. I'm going to now go up to the top right and I'm gonna save this as a template. Okay, I guess you can call it VWAP plus RSI, super basic. Okay, now it's my template. So I can now quickly get in up in that little folder to this template, and it's gonna have the VWAP and the RSI popped up all the time. So that's an option for you. You can have, a, there are a lot more indicators where that came from. They have a list, you can scroll down uh, you can also start typing things in. And as you start typing things in, you can kind of find, you know, what you're looking for potentially. There is a long list here. I'm not going to be able to go through every single indicator, but trust me, uh, there are there are more out there than what they have, but this is going to give you a decent, decent list to play with, uh, at least to start things off. So let me get these off of my screen because I want to keep the charts clean. Now let's move over to the top middle of the chart platform. Here is where we have a couple options. If I click on the left option, this little trend line tool, if you're familiar with trading view, you would see something like that. You have the trend line, trend channel, ray, extended line, info line, horizontal line, horizontal ray, and vertical line, all available to you. If you're not familiar with some of them, I encourage you to try them out. But for example, let's go to spy and let's see if we can do some, uh, do some stuff here. So let's go to the daily time frame. And yeah, here's where we can kind of get into some fun. So trend line, boom, mark it off three touches. Boom, it's a valid trend line to me. Got the trend line there. We can draw in a trend channel if you really want to, and then extend that out. Kind of cool. Uh, it's an option. I just got to go back or hit delete on my, uh, when I select the, boom, select your trend line or your whatever, I guess, tool you're using. See how it has now, it's now selected. There are options up at the top, which we'll cover in a second. There's a trash can, or if I just click delete on my keyboard, it'll get rid of it. So let me go back, put that trend line back up there so you can kind of see. Okay, cool trend line. We got the trend line drawn in. You know, it's kind of skinny, it's kind of small. Let's go over to the right-hand side and change, or up to the top back and change it. So first option is when I have my selected trend line or my whatever tool I'm using is the color. I might want to make this blue. Well, blue is tough to see. In this case, white's actually pretty good because the color is the background. Then the next option is the line style. Solid, dotted, or dashed. I like solid lines, personally. 
And the thickness, one point to five point. I love thicker lines because personally, uh, not personally, just what I found, I think many people will find is that, you know, does a super skinny line always have to be perfectly respected? No, there's usually a little bit of room for, uh, for error, right? How you draw things. And the market doesn't care about your trend lines. The market doesn't give a crap about your trend lines. So I like to have the thicker lines and then that's kind of a more of a generalized area that I'm looking for. Of course, you can use a channel as well, but there's that. Start point, uh, you can have it none. You can make a circle. You can make it an arrow. If you want to have a direction to that line, I'd like to leave it at none. Personally, that's fine with me. And there's also the endpoint option as well. Same thing. Settings. You can go in, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is not something that I expected to see on Robinhood, but you could. So you have the ability to change the time and the price and the date of all these things. So I can, like, instead of drawing it out, you could literally come in here and just edit the trend line based off of times and prices that you already have, or let's say you've marked off or you've written down somewhere. I don't know why you would do that for, but maybe you would do, I don't know. There, 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 I, I, there's no right or wrong answer here. So whatever. So let's say if I adjust this, right? So if I was, this is the, this is the first line I assume. So five, nine, let's say I go to five ninety or the second line, boom, five ninety off the first line. And now it changes. See how it just moved that up. If I move this down, watch, let me move this down. Let me go back to that settings. See how it says 586.56? If I move this to 550, 586.99, see how it kind of bumps it up a little bit? So you can move your trend lines by typing in the number. So all they're doing is like, these are just two coordinates that you're, you're, you're creating on the chart. So you're creating a price, a date, and a time. And then you can adjust those things. So if I want to take this to, let's just say, instead of 20, I go to 10. Now it brings it a further to the left earlier in the day. So kind of cool. Uh, didn't think that that would be an option there, but that's actually a really cool setting that you can change. Okay, cool. Showing the y-axis and x-axis. What that means is see at the bottom of your screen, see how this little gray area is highlighted? That's showing you on the x-axis, the highlighted area of the trend line. And the y-axis, it's also highlighted here, but then it has the number uh, 586.90 and 583.37, the top and the bottom uh, or the, 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 the point on the y-axis of that dot on the trend lines. Kind of cool. I, 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 don't know, I think it is. You can lock this or unlock it so you can move it or not move it. You can also delete it or click on done. When you're done, boom, you leave it in there and now your trend line is locked and loaded. You're ready to go. Cool. Next box over here is rectangle or oval. So if you like kind of highlighting zones or areas, you have the option to do that. And then the same things apply. So you can change the line style. You can change the thickness, the color, the settings. You can change the coordinates as well. Uh, so you have all those options. Let me get rid of this guy. I'll get rid of this line too. Uh, inside of here, you have Fibonacci or tracements, date, time, price. This is something you can draw price range zones and stuff like that. This is something that I don't use too much, but some people do use it and uh, it's there for you. It's a more of a, I guess somewhat of a common uh, indicator. Fibonacci's are definitely mu much more common uh, compared to maybe other things. So they have the basics here. Uh, you got the call out price label. So if I wanted to, for example, create a path, you know, I can do this with the path, which is kind of cool. Um, maybe it's not useful to you. Maybe it is useful to you. Let me go back to this chart, go to the bigger time frames here. Um, if I go to call out, I can type this in or have a little text box and say, like, if I'm trying to teach something or explain something, I can kind of draw this point in and say, Hey, this is a relative high, you know, whatever I want to do. And let's just call it rel high, you know, and I can draw these things in so I can have, you know, some stuff marked out in my charts so people can see it, increase the text size. If I would like to, uh, let's keep that. Let's increase that even further. Actually, boom, rel high, lock it in and delete it. We're done. Boom. Continuous draw, snap to data. This is kind of like, if I was to start drawing things, um, if I go to trend line and I would have marked it off, what I could do with when it comes to like snapping to data is have it like literally tied to the top of a, of a, of a point on the chart. So let's just draw this in. Let's see, like, can we draw like a, uh, an uptrend? Let's just see if I can. Uh, I have it set to snap data and continuous draw. Let's go to trend line. Let's go see how it like now, when I start, try to try to draw the trend line in, it's going to like 
be a ma it's gonna magnet like pull my cursor right down to the top of that candle. So let's see if I can do that. Boom, snapping to the data, and it, it that's kind of cool. Like to me, that could be useful because when you are trying to be more accurate, it's gonna snap it to the top of that candlestick, which is kind of cool. Continuous draw. So like if I keep going, and I like just it'll let me just keep drawing trend lines. That's what that means. So let me get rid of these. Get rid of all these actually. Boom, boom, boom. Get rid of continuous draw. I don't need that setting, but those are your options. So that right there in a nutshell is how it works. On the bottom right, you're also going to see or how like the basics of the, the top works. The bottom right, you're gonna see how it, where these little auto scale sign or this little auto scale little lock. Click on that, get rid of that. And now you can, so you can zoom in the charts however you want to. Toggle the X and Y axis zoom with your mouse on the screen. I like the auto scale because it just makes it easier. So as I zoom in, zoom out, it kind of like auto sets the chart to make it look nicer, but you can get rid of that if you want to. So if you want to zoom in or look at things a certain way, you could. Then the bottom left, you have the options for different time frames. So it has a one day, one week, one month, one or three months, year to date, year, five year, all. Zoom out all time, five years, one year. It's just going to view on your chart window, that time frame, The interval is what the, what the candlesticks are gonna show you or the interval on the chart. So one day means these are daily candlesticks. Each of these candlesticks is one day. Four hour, one hour, five minute. Those are the ones that I use. Go to the right of that, see those those two little arrows are? I know it's small. Click on that and now you can customize ticks, seconds, minutes, hours, weeks, and even create custom intervals as well by the minutes by the ticks, seconds, days, hours, years, ranges, anything you would like. I just, what I did was I, I went in and I customized or I clicked the ones I liked and I starred them. So if I wanted to add, for example, the, let's go back down here. If I wanted to get rid of the one where I want to add the one week and I go to the right hand side where the star is, click on that. Now on the bottom, it'll show up the five minute, one hour, four hour, one day and one week charts without me having to do anything. I don't have to like go in here and, and check on every time. It'll just be there so I can toggle between all of those time frames, which are the, really the ones that I look at. I don't look at anything else. Those are the main ones I look at. So whatever you like to look at, customize it, click, let's click the star. So you have it and you're good to go. That's the charts. That's Robinhood legend charts in a nutshell. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. If you're looking to take journaling your trades to the next level, there is a completely free, like literally free, not selling anything training below this video if you want to take your journaling to the next level. And uh, we teach you how to take control of your own trading data. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope this is helpful. Peace.